Marriage between relatives, which was once considered a very natural and common method of marriage, has suddenly become a frowned-upon act, with many warnings about its risks. In fact, some countries have begun enacting laws to prohibit cousin marriages. These sudden developments have made people fearful of such unions, leading to widespread criticism. All of this raises the question, does cousin marriage really cause problems for children, as some claim? Welcome to Next Level Wonders. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you receive our videos as soon as they're posted. To understand the topic of cousin marriage, we need to familiarize ourselves with DNA. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is what controls us. It's the code inside us that determines eye color, hair length, skin color, the genetic diseases we might inherit, and even psychological disorders. Every part of our DNA controls something in our body, and we call each of these parts a gene. That's why, when scientists want to understand something about humans or diagnose a complex disease, they go back to the very beginning, the genes. The way human DNA is formed is fixed. A child inherits half of their genes from the father and the other half from the mother, thus forming their own unique genetic makeup, which they then pass on to their offspring. So, if we want to know whether cousin marriage is harmful or not, we need to understand what happens when the genes of two closely related individuals combine. The founder of modern genetics was the Austrian monk and scientist Gregor Johann Mendel. Mendel found it difficult to study inheritance patterns in complex organisms like humans, so he decided to simplify his work by studying different varieties of pea plants. Peas have obvious variations, such as pod color, texture, seed color, and flower shape, traits that are easy to observe with the naked eye. After collecting these different varieties, Mendel began conducting breeding experiments, isolating them and performing cross-pollination himself. Over time, as new generations appeared, Mendel began noticing the patterns of inheritance and introduced several laws and theories that revolutionized genetics and biology. What concerns us from Mendel's work is his discussion of dominant and recessive genes. As we mentioned earlier, half of our traits come from the father and the other half from the mother. So, if the father has brown eyes and the mother has the same eye color, the child will most likely have brown eyes. But what happens if the mother has green eyes? In this case, we have a dominant gene and a recessive gene, essentially a strong gene and a weak gene. The strong gene is the one whose traits will appear. So if brown is the dominant gene, the child will be born with brown eyes and vice versa. This concept of dominant and recessive genes is the core of our answer. The problem with cousin marriage is that the genes of the father and mother are very similar. For example, the genetic similarity between a person and their sibling is about 50%. Between a person and their uncle or aunt is around 25%. And between a person and their first cousins is about 12.5%. The further the relation, the less genetic similarity there is. Most of the problems that arise in cousin marriages stem from genetic diseases. What makes these diseases more likely in such marriages is the similarity of genes. Let's imagine a family where diabetes or high blood pressure is common. If marriage occurs within this family, the child will inherit half their genes from the father and the other half from the mother. The father carries the family's genetic predisposition to diabetes and high blood pressure, and the mother does too, since she's from the same family. So when it comes to a disease like diabetes, the child may inherit the defective gene from both parents, meaning they will likely develop diabetes. However, if the father marries someone outside the family, the situation changes. This outsider has completely different genes, and this genetic diversity increases the chance that the harmful genes from the original family will disappear and not appear in the new generation. 
Returning to the diabetes example, if the father marries a woman from outside the family who doesn't have diabetes, the child will inherit the defective gene from the father and the healthy gene from the mother. If the healthy gene is dominant, it will appear in the new generation, and the child may not develop diabetes. The problem is that the diseases resulting from cousin marriages are not minor. While conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure might seem mild compared to others, some statistics indicate that 14 out of every 4,000 children born from cousin marriages are born with Down syndrome, not to mention thalassemia, Mediterranean anemia, which is one of the most well-known and dangerous genetic diseases resulting from cousin marriage. The issue is that most genetic diseases are latent, meaning the gene is present and the parent is a carrier, but the disease isn't active. When passed on to the children, it may become active. Now, a logical question arises. Does every cousin marriage result in children with diseases? The answer is no. Cousin marriage is not the direct cause of birth defects. The cause lies in the genes that carry defects. For example, a person with healthy genes could marry someone completely unrelated, but if that person carries a dominant disease-causing gene, the disease could still be passed to the children. Now, after understanding that the issue isn't directly dependent on whether the couple is related, but rather on their genes, we see that while the risk may increase slightly in cousin marriages, over 90% of cases will still result in healthy children. However, no one wants to take that risk with their child. That's why there's a simple solution, comprehensive premarital screening. These tests have become very common. If, God forbid, the doctor says there's a risk of problems in the children, there are often treatment options available. In some cases, the parents can take certain medications before conception to reduce the chances of any issues in the fetus. Interestingly, sometimes cousin marriages have the opposite effect. While they're often blamed for passing on diseases and deformities, they can also strengthen desirable genes in certain families. There are many places in the world where healthy, strong genes passed down through generations have created populations with incredible traits, such as the Scandinavian people, who have strong builds and high endurance in harsh climates, or the Bajau people of Indonesia, whose spleens have grown 50% larger than average due to their diving lifestyle. While some advocate against cousin marriages today, the situation was completely different in the past. It wasn't just common people. Royal families practiced it extensively. Even today, most royal families prohibit marriage to those without royal blood. While royal intermarriage preserved generations with strong, shared genes, it also led to disasters. One of the most famous cases was discovered while studying King Tutankhamun. Scientists found that statues of the king showed abnormalities in his chest and pelvis. Additionally, over 130 canes were found in his tomb, indicating he needed them for walking during his life. Tutankhamun was also one of the few kings who left no heir. His two daughters died at a young age. Despite his achievements, he died at just 19 years old. DNA analysis revealed that his parents' genes were nearly identical, bringing us back to the point we discussed earlier. High genetic similarity increases the likelihood of diseases, especially latent ones that aren't visible in the parents. A more recent example is Queen Victoria of the British royal family, who passed down one of the most dangerous human diseases, hemophilia, a condition where blood doesn't clot properly. Even a minor injury can lead to severe bleeding, and many sufferers die before age 30. Though Queen Victoria herself didn't have the disease, it was present in her genes and appeared in two of her daughters. Since royal families intermarried, the disease spread rapidly, and it's said to have contributed to the deaths of many European princes. In the end, genetic problems don't depend solely on who you marry, but rather on your genes and those of your partner. 
You might even know relatives who married each other and had perfectly healthy children. Still, if you want to be extra cautious, comprehensive premarital screening is widely available. It helps identify potential future problems so you can prepare for them. That's all for now. And don't forget, if you have a question that keeps you up at night, write it in the comments below the video so we can answer it. Most of our episodes now are inspired by your comments. Goodbye.